Hey guys, this is the Wiggle Man. Today we're going to be painting the Fellhound by Loot Studios. This project I did as a live stream series uh, over the period of four live streams over two days. If you look in the top now, there's a playlist that links directly to all the live streams. I've put them all together in a nice little playlist for you. But yeah, this video here is just going to summarize each step that we went through during the painting process something a bit more digestible for someone who just wants to know how it was done quickly. But if you'd like, if you want to watch the live streams, please subscribe, hit the notification button, because it seems that YouTube doesn't really want to push my live streams too much, so hit the notification button so you get notified. Anyway, let's begin. So for this project, laying down the base colours, we're going to be doing mostly a slap chop technique. If you're unfamiliar with what slap, slap chop is, it is the, uh, it's a grisel, I believe is the, the proper term for it. It's the idea of laying down your base shades onto a model, just using black and white, um, also known as sketching, and then applying a contrast paint over the top. So for the first layer that we're using, it is uh, on top of a black primer, we're using Vallejo Game Color Stonewall Grey. And we're just using our Army Painter uh, dry brush and just going from a top downwards motion over the model, ever so lightly, just dry brushing this layer of grey. For the next stage, we're doing exactly the same again, except this time we're using Vallejo Game Color Dead White. This time we're going over a bit less of the grey, so we're not doing a full coverage from top to the bottom of the model, we're just going around the tops of the armour and catching the peaks of the skin. At this point in the video, I'd also like to point out I'm not sponsored by Monster. I was just thirsty. So now that we've established how we want the lighting to look on our model, we now take our Pallid Bone Speed Paint by Army Painter and we begin to go over all of the skin on the model. Um, we just cover it all with the speed paint and let it work its magic. The only special techniques that you really need to do here is just make sure that you're colouring within the lines. Uh, make sure you're not getting any of the Pallid Bone onto any of the other areas of the model. Uh, so we just want it on the skin, we don't want it on the armour or the leather or anything like that. So to give the skin a bit more of an interest, a bit more of an impact, I took Army Painter's Crusader skin and began to paint it across all of the wounds, wounded areas where it looks like the armor's either been bolted on or jammed into the monster's skin. Uh, what you'll see me do here in a minute is I essentially paint a line of the speed paint across where the wounds are, then I'll wick a bit off and then I begin to push upwards towards the towards the wound. This helps the speed paint to kind of blend in uh, with the pallid bone that we'd already laid down before. During this stage, we also added in some Hive Dweller purple speed paint around the gums of the beastie, uh, just to uh, bring them out, make his jaws a bit more defined. Next up, we're going to start highlighting the skin of the model. I'm going to do some good old-fashioned brushwork with this one. Um, I took Vallejo Game Colors Dead Flesh Color 
and then I just went over all the raised areas of the model. Um, I added just a dab of um, Vallejo glaze medium, just to thin it down a little bit, and went over all of the uh, raised areas of the, the around the tops of the model, um, just picking out the highlights. So now we're going to do a second step of the highlight. This time we're going to be using Vallejo Game Colors Bone White Color. Um, we're just going to be covering part of the surface that we previously highlighted. So we're not covering up everything that we've just highlighted. Um, we're just going over the tippy tops of the model. Um, I tend to kind of go in 50% increments when I'm highlighting. Um, so I'll highlight an area, my next highlight on it, I'll highlight half that area um, from the direction the light's coming and then if I do a third highlight I do half the previous area from the direction the light's coming. Uh, I find this to be quite a good rule of thumb. So finally, I wasn't fully happy with um, the highlights on kind of the lower parts of the body, so around the pores, so I cheated here. Uh, I took my teeny tiny dry brush and I used a bit of the Vallejo Game Color Dead Flesh and I just dry brushed it around the pores uh, just to give a bit more contrast to it. Next up, we're taking Vallejo Game Colors Dead White Color. We're adding just a drop of glaze medium into that, um, a very small drop into that because we don't want it too runny. And we're going to start uh, base coating the teeth and the eyes of the model. Uh, make sure you've got your tiny, teeny, teeny tiny brushes prepared um, because we don't want to be making any mistakes here. On to painting the eyes now. With the eyes, what I did, as you can see here, is I laid down a coat of Army Painter Speed Paint Blood Red color. Um, once I'd laid down that coat, I took a just a teeny tiny dot of uh, Vallejo Game Colors Dead White, and I blended that in just around the center of the eye. For adding a bit of colour onto the teeth, what I did was I took Army Painter Speed Paint Crusader Skin and began to paint it around the tops and bottom halves of the teeth. Basically, the part, the, the, the root of the tooth that's connected to the gum, I would paint that with uh, Crusader Skin. 
doing this helps the 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 face of the model look a lot more realistic um no one's got perfectly shiny white teeth um, no one i know and uh, it's always good to add just a little bit of color into it For a highlight on the gums, I took Vallejo Game Colors Hexed Lichen color and just went over the top parts of it, essentially, anywhere that's sticking out around the gums, um, just to give it a bit more detail and a bit more texture. We did nearly hit disaster doing this stage because I tried to get inside of the mouth and paint the tongue with the same Hexed Lichen color, um, and I managed to get a bunch of uh, purple onto his teeth. Whoopsie. So the reason I enjoyed painting this project so much, I figured that the model, all the textures and all the different surfaces on the model uh, allowed me to express myself with all different kind of miniature painting techniques. So for his horn, I wanted to try wet blending. So I started off with a base coat of Vallejo Game Colors charred brown. I then took Vallejo Game Colors Kaki and began to paint about two thirds of the horn that I already base coated. Some paint retarder medium would have been very appropriate here. However, I just used the two colors as they were on my palette um, and basically played between the two, trying to blend between the two whilst they're still wet. We're going with wet blending folks here. So when I'm wet blending, what I tend to do is I try to push the colors into each other uh, to get them to blend on the surface. Something like this horn here is perfect for practicing your wet blending uh, because it's a nice flat surface so you've got plenty of area to play with. Once I was happy with the first blend, I then moved on to a layer of Vallejo Game Colors Dwarf Skin and did exactly the same between the Dwarf Skin and the uh, Vallejo Game Color Kaki layers. This time only focusing on the top one third of the horn. Once I was happy with the dwarf skin layer, I went back down to the first layer and began blending once again. And for the final tip of the horn, we used Vallejo Game Colors Bone White Color, blended that in with the dwarf skin layer and then we applied an edge highlight down the sides of the horn to try and tie it all together. To finish up on the organic parts of the model, I took Vallejo Game Colors black and just painted his dippy toes, uh, painted all his claws black. Mm -hmm. 
So, moving on to the armour next. Up until this stage, I wasn't quite certain what colour I wanted to paint the armour on the model. Looking at some of the work in progress shots that I'd taken, someone said to me it looked very non-metallic metally. Um, and this was purely by accident, if I'm honest. Um, non-metallic metal terrifies me as a concept. Uh, but I did take that feedback uh, in, uh, in good faith. And so I decided to double down on it. Uh, I started dry brushing the model once again using uh, uh, Vallejo Game Colors Dead White. And this time with my brush strokes, I was aiming for the direction that the light was pointing at the model. Uh, so my thought is that the, the, the beast is cresting over a hill, um, ready to pounce on its prey, and I wanted the light shooting into its face, essentially. Really, the big key here for the dry brushing is to make sure that you've got as little paint as possible on your, on your brush and that you're building up the layers gradually. I can't stress this enough. For the saddle, I took Army Painter's Speed Paint, hardened leather. Uh, now, this is a colour that doesn't work particularly well in dark areas, so I used my medium dry brush and just went over exclusively the saddle to make it come out a bit more and, and show the hardened leather a bit more. To add a bit more interest onto the model and a bit more colour, I took Army Painter Speed Paint Blood Red and began to paint around the saddle of the model, trying to avoid the armour. Once again, as before when we did the flesh, it's just a game of painting within the lines or colouring within the lines. Going to be a bit freeform now over the, these next few stages. It came down to painting all of the details on the model. Now, I, in my head, I had this idea that the rider of this beast was part of kind of a war band gathering stuff together. So I used a myriad of different color browns uh, and started base coating all the different parts. So the handle of the sword that was painted with uh, game colors bone white. Um, the satchels were painted with Vallejo game colour Beastly Brown. Uh, I painted some areas with khaki. Um, and this just made the details pop a little bit more and make them look a bit less uniform. Concern between the metallics of the chains and the bolts on the armour and the black armour itself, I decided to go with just a basic metal colour, uh, true metallic metal, and uh, paint those details on. I used Vallejo Game Colours Gun Metal as the base uh, metallic paint for this stage.
And just to sound a little bit contradictory here, I then took a Army Painter Quick Shade and used the Strong Tone, and I painted that over all of the brown areas and all of the metallic paint that I'd just laid down. So we're approaching the finishing steps of the model now. Off stream, I painted the base, but you can ignore that because that's all going to completely change on the next stage. So now that our uh, shade is completely dry, we then take uh, lighter shades of the browns of the leather that we'd previously put down and shaders, and then we begin to highlight it all. We also do the same with all the true metallic metals. We use Vallejo Game Color Chainmail Silver for this. So for adding the detail onto the base, I took Vallejo's environmental snow effect. Uh, I used one of the brushes that comes with uh, Elegoo water washable resin, uh, because these brushes are really, really fantastic for when you want a job done that's gonna absolutely ruin a brush. So I just went ham on the model at this point. I figured, hey ho, it's Christmas, let's make it a snowy scene. And applying the snow is simple as just getting a buttload onto your brush and slapping it on the base. Once we'd put down a decent layer of snow, I took some uh, tufts of grass off a spare sheet that I had. And also just to make it look like the snow would begin to melt, I also used some Vallejo water effects and began to pour that around areas of the model uh, to make it look like there was kind of that glossy finish as if there was a snow melt going on. And then to finish off the model, I took Stuart Semple's Black 3.0 and painted it around the rim of the model. Thanks again for joining me on this video. Thank you very much if you've watched it to the end. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it means the world to me, it really, really does. If you've painted this model, I'd love to see how you've done it. Um, so please feel free to uh, message me at wiggleman987 on Instagram. If there's anything you want to see in more depth, please feel free to view the live stream VODs. They're on my channel. They're going to stay there. They're going to live there in the playlist that I linked at the beginning of the video and down in the description below. Anyway, on to the final reveal, which you've already seen because I put it at the beginning of the video, but on to the final reveal. <laughs>